Hey guys, welcome back to our Ottawa Senators Rebuild Series, Episode 7. We are through our year two draft. We landed Shane Wright, huge addition. We also landed a second rounder that ended up being a medium elite 80 overall player. So an absolute steal for us. We're in free agency now though, guys. And we're targeting some big names. So we'll see what we do here. And then we go into year two. As I'm expecting big things. This next year, we need to make the playoffs. A huge jump. We finished last in the league last season. And the first year, we didn't do very well either. Which, again, I was completely okay with. Because I wanted a few more top-end prospects. Now we have them. There's really no reason why we're not going to uh, make some real strides with this team in this season. So... That is what we're looking forward to on today's episode. We'll get into the rest of free agency as well as the first part of the next season, guys. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for daily NHL content, guys. All right, let's get into year three of the Ottawa Senators here on the episode seven of our rebuild. All right, guys, so like I said, we are in year three. We're, well, technically, we're about to start year three. Year two free agency and at the top of the list, we've got 12.382 million in cap space, okay? And I'm seeing someone right here, Braden Point, and he looks like he will fit, and I do want another top-end center that we can go out and get. We've got a couple of decent second-line centers, but I wouldn't mind having Stutzla pay wing. Um, however, Braden Point is a playmaker, which does kind of hurt things. However, other than that, I mean, the only other option that we could go out for in terms of wingers would be Brock Besser, who would probably be perfect, but he doesn't really fit our system. There just really isn't anyone else that I really like. And so we might be able to split up Braden or split up, uh, put point on the second line. Um, but I think that's who we're going to try and grab. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. We could also try Malkin, but. I'm not a huge fan. He wants two years instead of just one. I'm hmm. part of me again this season. I really want to make the playoffs. Okay, guys. So I do. I do think that we can. However, Mika Zibanejad also another option for us. I didn't even realize. And in fact, I think that's who we should target. I think he's just a better fit. Three years though. At 6.4. I mean, we have so much money. The problem is, is that a lot of these guys that we have building up. They are going to want to be re-signed, and it looks like a lot of other teams are going after him. However, he would just fit really well. The other option would be Tomas Hurdle. 84 overall is a sniper, and he does fit line two. Man, he wants six years. In what world? I love you, Tomash, but I don't know about that big guy. I wouldn't mind two in case he doesn't fit. Maybe even three, but it... I'm, I'm going to go two here. I'm okay. I To be honest, again, personally, Tomas Hurdle is one of my favorite players in the NHL. And I do need a sniper. And he does fit. It's just, wow, I don't know about that. What about in terms of goaltenders? Dude, Shesterkin would be awesome to get. The problem is... Is he an RFA? Hmm. We have Jesper Wallstead coming. And probably coming pretty quickly so but i want to make the playoffs this year what do we do we sign rask he wants two years i would really like to sign someone for like two years i wonder if we could sign shesterkin for two but then he's really our goaltender of the future at 6.5 isn't a bad isn't bad at all either Hmm, Yorgiev. What about Yorgiev for like two years? At 3.57. Again, we need we need someone who isn't awful. And I'm okay with that because we're gonna trade we're gonna get rid of um Murray this season. We're gonna find a way. We also have to hire an AHL assistant coach, so we'll go ahead and do that as well. Uh we'll go ahead and hire a coach. Let's see, is there NHL, NHL Associates? We want a generalist that is good teaching. We'll see if we can make them an AHL coach for us. Actually, we have a lot of good defensemen, though. Bad teaching. Is there anyone with good teaching? A minus. Let's see. That's not bad. Sorry, we need, it was board on, and we need an AHL assistant coach. Okay. 
I doubt he takes it, but we'll see. An AHL assistant coach. Where are you, Bordon? And we'll sign him and see if he accepts. Probably not, but, you know, you never know. As let's see if we get some signees as we did offer some contracts. And here we go. I don't know if they'll accept. Zachary Rollins says he will accept. He is a scout, so that's awesome. He's an A-minus scout. Uh, wow, my sources tell me your staff chemistry is excellent. So I'm hopeful that I can join the staff with little drama. I gladly accept. Bang, awesome. Big win for us there. He's a pretty good coach. Man, everyone wants your venti. I'm just wondering if I should trade him because he's still low overall. All right, we're still waiting on some bigger acquisitions. And that's another scout. He accepts our offer, which is awesome. And Gautier LeDuc also signs as a scout. Okay, so now I just want to make sure that our scouting staff is full. We need two more. Okay. Do we have any contracts offered? No. Okay. What regions are we looking for? Europe. We need some for Europe. Let's see. It's just C's basically. A lot of other teams interested. We'll see if we can pry them away. And let's take a look and make sure. DL is nice. Oh, this one's much better. Okay. And that should be it for that. And again, we're just trying to slowly upgrade our scouting staff by every season, you know, getting rid of the guys that are low rated and trying to find A's and B's. And Georgiev is now our starter in Ottawa. So Murray knows his days are numbered. And Tomash Hurdle also signs awesome there. So that is pretty much it. Um, I've gotten everyone that I wanted to in free agency. And man, they no wonder. And there's really no one else I need to get rid of other than Murray. So we'll put Murray on the block because now he absolutely has to go. As we've got uh, run out of cap room, slowly but surely, but that's not really an issue for us because we've got a lot of rookies coming. Look at the trade value that we have acquired over the last little while. So pretty proud of that, guys. We are in uh, great shape. I don't really know of anyone else I want to get. Mete might be on the move, too, um, because he just might be replaced by... We have some of the biggest defensemen coming up from our, uh, from, from our draft that just... I don't know. I mean, Gerventi is a 19-year-old... Like, why do they want him a low top nine? They keep offering. It's like, it's wild. He's the only one, though. So, all right, guys. So, we are good to go. We are going to sim to the beginning of the season, and uh, we'll pick it up there. All right, real quick. We got offered a second rounder for two-thirds, Gerventi, and a seventh. I'm going to take this because I think that a second rounder is probably worth more than that. So, I'm completely okay with that. We're going to take it. All right, here we go, guys. We are in year three. This is the time we make our huge move up the leaderboards in terms of making the playoffs and a chance at a Stanley Cup. All right, so let's just take a look at the roster real quick. So Stutzla, an 89 overall now with Kachuk, who's an 87. Norris up to 84. We have Shane Wright playing in the NHL this year at 80 overall. Batherson's now an 85, as is Colin White. Kurashev's an 80. Logan Brown's an 83. And Vitaly Abramov, he's been in the AHL for two seasons, now in 81, making the jump to the NHL, Foreman and 10 in 82. We have Tomas Hurdle, who we just signed, and then Connor Brown, who we're probably going to move on from. On defense, Shabbat and Hamilton, Brandstrom and Johnson, Mete and Bernard Docker. Our defense is nice, but we've got to make some moves here because um, I want to see what Luke Hughes is up to as well. And we've also obviously got to you know adjust for the line chem. Then we've got Georgiev and Murray, and again, we're going to move on from... Murray, in terms of, yeah, let's just take a look at who's on the roster and who's scratched because we're probably going to have to make some pretty big adjustments there. In terms of scratch, Tyranny, and Dadnov, yeah, those are both, mm, where does Hurdle fit? He does fit with us, so that's nice. And he would actually fit the first line pretty well. So I'm okay with that. It's all lefties, though. That's not that bad. Although... Just Colin White's second line. So we'll put Colin White in the second line. What about Batherson? Fits the first. Keeps it a third. We might actually do that. That might be the play. Hurdle can play center on the second line. Josh Norris. And Colin White. Who is the better faceoff rating? All right. So I went through and edited all the lines that I 
wanted to, and here is what I came up with that seems to be the best fit all the way around. So Brady Kachuk, Stutzla, and Batherson, who's now up to an 85 overall with plus three. So that means Stutzla's a 92, and Kachuk's a 90, and Batherson's an 88, which is a great first line. Second line, I really want Shane Wright to play in the NHL this year, and he fits the second line really well with this coach, which is awesome, and he is right-handed, and his face-off rating is absolute trash. So he's going to play on the right wing with Josh Norris, and Vitaly Abramov for the start because they fit well. So that's 84, 87, and 83. That's a little bit light on the second line. But our third line is a pretty big strength. It's just they don't fit well together. Uh, Hurdle on the third line. I might bump up to replace Batherson if it doesn't go well with Colin White and then Formanton on the third line. And then Dadnov, Tierney, and Logan Brown. Dadnov's got to be moved this year. He just does not fit. And honestly, like... I've got Connor Brown scratched, Kurashev scratched, and then Mete will show you in a second. I honestly, Kurashev just doesn't fit, so I think we're going to try and move him, and maybe we can get a different prospect that maybe fits a little bit better. On defense, we've got Shabbat and Hamilton, and here is where the issue starts to run in, is we've got so many good defensemen on this team. Because when we saw or when we drafted Michael Johnson, who I was not expecting, he's a low elite top six left-handed defenseman at 18 years of age. Like that is insane. You have to play him. But the problem is, is that we have Jake Sanderson now as well, who's now 20 years old, medium elite. He's gonna be a really good defenseman, also left-handed. And then you have Shabbat, who's not going anywhere. So we have Hamilton, right-handed, Brandstrom, who's left-handed but plays right defense, and then Bernard Docker as well, but they don't fit well together at all. So I don't know what we're going to do here. If this doesn't work and we, it, we're we having a rough season, I'm going to have to make some moves regardless. So I think Mete is probably gone unless we put him in the AHL for a little while. Uh, the other option, we all I mean, we also have Hughes as well. So I think I'm going to trade Hughes for a forward that fits. But again, that's something that we'll look at a little bit later. We have Yorgiev and then Matt Murray and Nett. So our team is looking really nice in terms of just well-balanced. And again, all these guys are on pretty cheap contracts. We've signed them for a long time. In the AHL, things are just as good. I mean, honestly, they don't fit well team-based-wise. But Atsurati, uh, Pinto, and Sokolov are first line. So Ratsy's going to get his first uh, first attempt at pro hockey. And then we've got Jack Kapaka, who really, I mean, 79 overall is phenomenal. And, I mean, we might go like that and put him on the first line because he is on the cusp of probably either making the age NHL. I mean, he does fit the fourth line well. And, again, because our coaches match, he'll fit the fourth line in the NHL. Got to kill Thomas, who is just a personal favorite player of mine. And I really don't know. He's 22. Hmm. I'm wondering if I should just give him more ice time because to try and get him to grow. A second line's fine. Jonathan Davidson, 25 years old, 77 overall. We've got Logan Shaw, who's kind of on the older age, but he'll start just he'll be on the team. Again, we need some decent 70 overall players that are older that just allow this team to win. Ridley Grieg, we also have he is now gonna get his first shot in the uh in the um pro in pro hockey, of course back at Carlson at center, and then Amadio with Al Ayafalo and Baden on the fourth line. Defense again, Luke Hughes. He's coming, like, and I don't know what we're going to do. We have too many lefties. We've got Lassie Thompson, who's 21 at 77 years of age, and he's a medium top four, um, and at least he plays right-handed defenseman. Josh Brown, now 28 years old. He's, again, our veteran on the team with Fortinato, who's now 26. And then Mason Howard and Artem Zub is now in the AHL, so a dip for him. But our defense is really good. Um, obviously, not a ton of prospects other than, other than um, Luke Hughes, but... And then in net, we've got Jesper Wallstead, who's going to get his first crack at pro hockey with Gustafson backing him up. So I really like our organization here. And what we've got going on, it's just I don't know what we're going to do about the defenseman issue, and we might have to make some moves, and that's completely okay. But for right now, I actually might just put them in the... Hmm. Thing is, do I want to bury them in the AHL? I mean, Mete's... I, we got to move on from Kurashev unless we put him in the AHL. He's 22. He's 80 overall, though. I might put him in the AHL. I think I'm going to do that. We're going to put him in the AHL. And do I put Victor Mete there as well? I think we're going to try and trade Mete. Yeah, that's probably the play. All right, so we made some moves here and put Kurashev. He's going to be... Uh, this is tough. Did we move Pinto down to the... Th 
I guess we'll try that. Okay. All right, guys, so we are all set. I will uh, do all the scouting, and then we're all set to go here for year three. Here we go. All right, guys, so we are at the start of the NHL season. We're going to take a look, one more look at our lines. We're also going to go through special teams, see if we can just make sure that, uh, yeah, we want to make sure that it at least is operating at uh, peak capacity. I wouldn't mind having him on the first pairing. Wow, he doesn't fit at all, huh? Brandstrom. Can we get this to be any higher? Does not look like it. I'm stunned at Shabbat. Okay. So now we're all set. The other thing I want to just look at real quick is the contract situation for guys that are expiring and who we're going to have to worry about. Stutzla is... Ex wow. All right. So Stutzla, we're going to have to try and resend. What is he looking at right now? 10.2 for six years. Okay, okay. And that would still make him an URFA. Again, not all that bad. Dougie Hamilton wants a re-sign. And honestly, we might move on from him, but I don't know. Dadnov, he's in the last year of his contract. We're going to trade him at the deadline. Same with Connor Brown. But our Docker, he wants uh, a re-sign. We'll give that one to him. Pinto and a couple others as well. Sokolov, our captain. Yeah, okay. This uh this will work. Okay, and then in nets. Just Gustafson and Decor. Okay, I think we're all set to go. And here we go, guys. We'll we will go through the first month of the season and see where we're at. We we are making the playoffs this year. If we're struggling early on, we might have to make some trades. Here we go with uh the first month. All right, we're through the first month. Four and seven. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. Okay, Stutzel leading the way with 13 points. Shane Wright right behind him with 10 and 11. Kachuk Hamilton and Jake Sanderson has got eight. I mean, our our young players are doing great, but that is not going to do it here. So who is struggling? Man, Abramov is three points. That's tough. But then we drop it down. Hmm. Formington has one point. Okay, yeah. Our third line has no points in an entire month of the season. I mean, I don't need... Hmm. Uh, wow, that's tough. Okay. Well, we got to try something. So we'll try moving Formington up to try and get him going. I have no idea. What about on the back end? Not all that bad. And then in net... We have got to get rid of Murray. Like, he, you know what? We're going to wave him. We are going to call up Gustafson, who's an 83, and send down Murray and just get banished. No one's going to take that contract. Stunning. But yeah, he has done enough damage to this franchise that we are going to go like that. And there we are in the AHL. Wallstead is going to take over. And Murray, you're not even going to start anymore, buddy. It's been, it's been a slice, but... You, we are mo we are moving on here. All right, now let's take a look at the AHL. Is damn that's tough. We are six one and two, second in the division. And Kurashev, who we dropped down, is now got thirteen points. Sokolov twelve and nine. Our man, our captain for these Senators, and Hughes is nine points as well. Uh, so things are looking good there for us. What did uh what did Wallstead do in net nine oh eight? Not terrible, but. All right, this next month is critical for these Senators because we can't keep falling down. We have got to get things going. Here we go with the second month. All right, through the second month, 10-14-1. We're 5-5 five and five in our last 10. But we are dead last in the division. So 25 games into the season, obviously not ideal. 30 points is the is the final wild card. We're nine points back, and Stutzel's having a great year. That's what's frustrating here. Stutzel's having a great year. Hamilton's having a good season. Kachuk, too. This one's tough, guys. I mean, points on the first line's a little rough, too, though. It might... I mean... Hmm. And we're at a point now where we kind of have to just get going here. What's Abramov doing? He's doing more than... Oh, man. 
I mean, it might be time to put him back up here. Batherson, he's just had a rough go. It's not like he's played bad. It's just there's just not enough room for him. I really don't think that's the play, though. And our defense, yeah. I mean, but minus seven, yeah, it's our defense. So, all right, we've got to make some moves here and maybe put some people down to the minors, call somebody up. I uh, might have to put Mete back in as well. How's Johnson doing? Yeah, that is not helping. All right, let's see what we can do. All right, so we switched things up, put Johnson down in the AHL with Luke Hughes. And we're going to leave that. And, uh, yeah, so our time Zub's now got to be traded. But, man, this is just awfully tough, guys, because we go and take a look at the trading block. I mean, we could trade Dadnov and something to get a real impact, like, first line right winger or even a second line. I mean, our second line is pretty weak. But Shane Wright has had a really good, a really good, eh, a decent season, I guess. Did we put him down in the third line? Hmm. And put Hurdle here on the, yeah, Hurdle is six points. Okay, we're going to go like that and just see. Because now at least we have a little bit more balance here. It's tough. All right, we've got to right the ship quickly, and I don't know if we're going to be able to, but... We got rid of Murray, and that was uh, a big key here, so we'll go to the end of December here. As we are still struggling here, through Jared, through December 31st, we're last in the division, second last in the league. And man, yeah, it looks like our season has just kind of slipped away from us here. And I mean, honestly, not ideal. Really wanted to make the playoffs, or at least make a push for the playoffs. Team is looking good. Shane Wright still having a decent season, but it might be time, although this might be a decent, a better fit here, putting right up here. But yeah, things just don't look like they're going our way. Shabbat and Hamilton. Sanderson is having an okay season, but yeah, defensively, just not a lot of points coming on the back end. And I guess that happens sometimes. We still have our first round pick, which is okay. Um, I, and we've got a lot of guys still that we can move and try and get an impact player. So I think that what an option might be is trade for a really, really talented high-end player, uh, specifically a second-line winger that fits. So I think that's what we're going to do um, over the next like month or so of the season is just look for someone really good to go in that first-line right-winger spot. Tim Stutzler now with 44 points in 38 games. Hamilton's got 38. He is clearly carrying this franchise like literally on his back offensively. Shane Wright's got 22 and 38. I wonder how that matches up uh, with uh, rookies. We'll take a look in terms of rookies in the NHL. And it's close. I mean, we got Eric Greentree with Holtz, Denisenko, Loktyanov, and then the 22 points from Shane Wright. But he will grow quite quickly. And, uh, yeah, we'll just have to take a look at how things work out there. Let's take a look real quick at the AHL. 22 7 and 2 so obviously the you know the moves that we've made in terms of like the draft picks and the signings and making sure that our hl team is in a good spot that's all well and good because it's cruising what about net i mean wall set look at that so our goaltender of the future he's about one year away nine point or nine two nine two five save percentage is phenomenal so it wasn't hasn't been an ideal season by any stretch of the imagination we've got a lot of moves that we're gonna make over the next month, um, I think that we're going to go after, like, a stud. Like, I mean, we could try and get Barkov or someone of that nature. Like, I'm talking, like, a really high-end player as we've got a ton of different uh, prospects and things that we can move. So I will focus on that over the next little while. I mean, look at this. This is wild. I mean, over the next little while, we are going to have some decisions to make and to make some prospects. Move it. Like, even Xavier Borgo, who was just a random second rounder that we drafted, 67 overall, he's got a lot of value. So yeah, we're gonna have some uh, we're gonna have some decisions to make. We've got some cap room, and uh, we've got a lot of prospects and, and and up and comers, and we'll worry about that as it comes. But guys, that's gonna do it for today's episode. Thank you again for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Have a good one.